Wizard 101 has a 13 year old story, so it's about time we go back to the beginning and remember how far we've come. Welcome to the story so far. Arc 3 starts with our graduation from Ravenwood, a wonderful occasion cut short by Bartleby getting sick. He says we must go to the world where the sky meets the land, Polaris. We head to Polaris to find Baba Yaga, a witch friend of Cyrus Drake. Our first step is to find Ivan the Great, Baba Yaga's henchman. We find out that Ivan has been imprisoned for helping the resistance. We team up with Red Rosa, the leader of the resistance, to break Ivan out of the Bastille. She needs us to get Danton out of the Bastille along with Ivan. We sneak into the Empress's private room disguised as a dancer and steal the key. We break Ivan and Danton out of the Bastille and we defeat the Warden. We learn that they are shipping the prisoners to the Frigid Moor under the orders of Rasputin. We overthrow the Empress and raise the Penguinonia flag high above Warriskburg. We meet up with Ivan and learn that Baba Yaga is a recluse and lives in the Forlorn Taig. We fortify the road through the Taig. We head deeper into the Taig and meet Mallory outside Baba Yaga's house. She says people will usually avoid her and we shouldn't disturb her. We head into the garden and meet Baba Yaga. Yaga sends us with Mallory to the Sunless Shrine to meet the Auroracle. The Auroracle says a shadow comes to tear land and sky and it is only a matter of time before the sand settle and the spiral ends as it began with a broken heart. We catch up with Ivan and head to Erbil Station which is Rasputin's prison camp. We free the prisoners and head into the Moor, a mining outpost for Rasputin. Ivan gets captured by Rasputin who uses mind control to force Ivan to do work thanks to the Borealis crystals. We head to the docks as Ivan is loading the ship. Unfortunately, we are too late and Rasputin sails away. We then free Ivan of mind control. We head back to Baba Yaga and she takes us to the Arcanum. The Arcanum is a place where the most prestigious scholars all over the spiral study. We become an initiate in the Arcanum and help chase down shadow creatures around the spiral. We learn that old Cobb who we freed in Chrysalis is Grandfather Spider, the third ancient being after Raven and Bartleby. It turns out Rasputin is one of Spider's children. We search for the ancient tusks to help us decipher the Auroracle's message. We get greeted by Grandmother Raven who tells us not to use this knowledge for harm or she will show us her wrath. We also meet Grandfather Spider who says we shouldn't meddle in ancient matters that have no bearing over us. We learn Rasputin is heading to the Sky Anchor atop Borealis Peaks. The Sky Anchor is the anchor point of the spiral. Without it, the spiral will unravel. We head to Rasputin's lab in the Kataba Ice Block. We raid it and find he is making golems out of the Borealis. We follow him up the jeweled slopes of the Borealis Peaks, fighting his henchmen on the way up. Finally at the top, we face off with Rasputin, now revealed to be the rat, Spider's oldest son. After his defeat, Grandfather Spider speaks to us, thanking us for helping him out of the black hole. However, he is set on destroying the spiral after all of the pain he has been put through since it was formed. He whisks away his first son, and we return to the Arcanum victorious. We head to Mirage in search of Bartleby's Eye of History, which was given to the Cabal by Malastir. We meet Santiago, a retired nomad who notices a change in the winds. We learn that Ericala, the Dark Genie, is the cause of the wind change. Ericala has returned after being imprisoned with Overlord Xerxes. We head to the Arcali Barrows to find them. We meet Ozzy, a skull of one of the former kings of Mirage. He offers us information on Xerxes if we restore him. He leads us to the necropolis where we meet Xerxes and Ericala talking to a chronomancer. House Persian raised Xerxes to serve them. However, Xerxes plans to conquer the world of Mirage. We try to unite the whole of Mirage against Xerxes. We meet the Sultana of Agrabah and settle the crime there in return for an alliance. The next step is to get the house cats in on the alliance. We recover the chrono shards for the houses and learn that Xerxes plans to control Mirage through the history stored in each chrono shard. After reuniting all of the houses, we head to Agrabah and meet Xerxes again. He transforms into the scorpion, Spider's second son, and fights us. After his defeat, Spider reluctantly speaks to us, saying that this was all a bluff and the true trouble of Mirage is happening in the Chrono Verge, which holds the sands of time. The genies took the Chrono Shards to the Astral Plane and locked them in the Irem Palace. We obtain the Irem Tablet and San Diego translates it. We then head to the Irem Palace. Ericala says she traded the Chrono Shards to Grandfather Spider in return for genie freedom, only after Spider has reversed the sands of times, destroying the spiral. We learn about the history of the Cabal in the Arcanum and find out that they used to be a part of the Arcanum. 
and were exiled after the Great Schism. We find Cabal members in Wizard City and learn that Grandfather Spider has Bartleby's Eye of History in Mirage. We learn from the Chronicle that in order for the Spiral to remain woven, Raven took Spider's Chaos Heart to charge the essence of the Spiral. Grandmother Raven speaks to us and tells us not to judge her for what she did, as it was necessary for the Spiral to exist. She sets the Sands of Time right for the meantime and tells us we must destroy Spider. We head to the Chrono Verge and enter the Sands of Time. We obtain the Chrono Shards after fighting some familiar foes and reach Spider in the center of the sand. At his defeat, he states that if we finish him here, the spiral will end as the Chaos Heart will no longer beat. Meloria states that her mother, Grandmother Raven, was right about us failing and not wanting to destroy Spider. In Meloria's attempt to destroy Spider, he captures her to get access to his heart. We collect the Eye of History and return it to Bartleby, finally. We need to find a crew to join us in the Spiral Arc heading on a mission to Imperia. We head to Warriskburg in search of Taylor Coleridge, who helped us sail the Starfall Sea in Chrysalis. He declines to help, but sends us to find Captain James T. Pork. After rescuing him and his number two beans from Azteca, we return to the Arcanum, ready to make the Arcanum's second mission to Imperia. The last mission was led by Medulla, who managed to get to Imperia and is now missing in action. We blast off to Imperia in the search of Ziggy Stardust. We crash land on Aerial Shore. To get out, we need to fix the Cyclolab of the Ark. This requires a windstone. However, all the windstones of the wrecked ships were taken by Khan, a crewmate who was left after Pork's last mission to Imperia. We head deep into the jungle to take on Caliban, the leader of the Beastmen, who has all of the windstones Khan took. However, the stone Caliban has was a fake. While we were dealing with the Beastmen, Khan took the Lux Capacitor from the Ark, the only remaining part he needed for his ship to return to Xanadu. We chase him into his tower and storm it. We agree to take him to Xanadu with us. Xanadu is under attack from shadow creatures. We head into the Leisure Dome and meet with Olivia, who was Khan's replacement to leave the Alfoy. We learn that Ziggy is stuck behind the shadow wall and the only way through it is to go through the sewers. We reach Ziggy and find that Medulla is working with the Bat to get Malori to unbind the Chaos Heart for Grandfather Spider. We reignite the Beacon of Hope, dropping the shadow wall and raising the spirits of the Alfoy. We return Khan to the palace and he is king once more. We find Bat's lair in the sewers. In the lair, we meet Medulla and Bat. Medulla enters and he says he is taking control of the Cabal's Imperia mission. Medulla then takes Malori from Bat. We learn they are heading to Athenor to break the ice and fire chain. We head to Athenor and try to get access to the underside of it. To do this, we must reunite the ice and fire dwarves who have been at war. We defeat the Great Terror who is blocking passage between the two cities. We head into the Temple of Light and find Bat and Medulla once again. Medulla controls Malori to break the chain, much to Bat's dismay. Bat tells us he has been trying to foil his father's plan to get the Chaos Heart. He was trying to recapture Malori from Medulla when he came to break the chain. With the Paradox Chain broken, Bat tells us the island of Athenor is going to spin out of control. We reverse the steam production and use the steam pressure to keep the island stable. We team up with Bat to take the fight to Medulla. Medulla has fled to Sapidius, the biggest sky squid found in Imperia. We convert an escape pod into bait that Sapidius will eat and make our way into the Cabal headquarters inside the squid. We destroy the squid and Medulla's Cabal soldiers as we head to his headquarters. Medulla mind controls pork, beans, and spark, pitting them against us and fights us. Once he is defeated, Bat rescues Malori and we return to the Arcanum. Malori is immediately put into the infirmary, and Xander works his life magic to stabilize Malori. Kyburn the Astral Scholar opens an astral portal that leads to a place between existence and nothingness that no spiral being can enter. However, since we are not from the spiral, we are able to enter. Inside the astral plane, Malori is speaking with Grandmother Raven. Raven states that she is tired of this conflict, and the only way to stop it is by destroying Spider once and for all, thus ending the spiral. Ambrose and the Council of Light storm into the Arcanum, saying that no medical work can be done on Malori without his supervision. He says that the Arcanum should not have unilateral decision-making power that impacts the whole spiral. The Council reports that Raven's Lufalum are fighting and leaving their temples, which is out of order because they are guardians, not soldiers. Ione agrees that it would be best for the Council and the Arcanum to work together to stop this chaos. Merle takes us aside and states that Bartleby is in distress, calling for Malori and for us to come to him. We head to Bartleby and learn that there is a pestilence eating his roots. Bartleby groans that we must complete the arboreal ritual, the Spring Eternal. 
This ritual is used to determine the one true champion of the Great Tree, the steward of tree magic, Bartleby's Scion. We get the spring leaf from all of the spell trees around Ravenwood and also from Mortis and Niles. We head into the root system and place the leaves and a lock of our hair in the offering bowl. The doors open for us. We head deep into the roots and subdue the pestilence. Bartleby states that he has waited too long for us to fulfill our destiny. Bartleby says that he has been trying to communicate with Mallory, but he is not getting through. We must go to the Reverie, a place where all minds meet. We head to Mandala, where the life and death chain is an Imperia. Once we lay Mallory in the Cave of Quickening, we enter the Reverie. We meet the Curator, and he leads us on a journey through Mallory's thoughts. Deep in the Reverie, Mallory and Bartleby talk. Bartleby states that it was Raven that sent the pestilence to him, not Spider. Bartleby says that Raven knows he is the only one capable of stopping her destroying Spider, so she poisoned him. He states that we are the heart of his plan to end this conflict and Mallory is the key. Spider gives Mallory an ultimatum. She needs to help him get the heart and he will rewrite the spiral with her as a ruler. She declines and flees deeper. We find her looking at the day she was given to Baba Yaga by Grandmother Raven. Raven states that she had to draw Mallory out of her in case the day came for her to fight Spider once and for all. Mallory wakes up, realizing that she is the love that Raven still has for Spider. In Xanadu, the Alfoy are teaming up with the Nimbari to try and stop Spider's forces. The Nimbari capture Bat and put him on trial. We head to Numia in search of the Bat. We are sent on a massive smokescreen mission to the aeroplanes to try and stop the Dark Cloud agents, who are spreading chaos all over Numia. Meanwhile, the Nimbari are turning their citadel into a massive weapon to destroy Paradox Chains powered by Bat's essence. We defeat Vanitas, the leader of the Nambari, and he leads us to the Admiral. We met the Admiral in Sapidius, but he has returned after his defeat to break the life and death chain, destroying Mandala. With Mandala destroyed, we race back to try and stop the chaos. We head deep into the chaos jungle and recharge Bat so he has his shadow power back. After Bat's recharge, we stumble across Spider once more. Mallory taunts Spider, frustrating him. Whilst trying to fix the chain's anchor, we are interrupted by Raven. She says Bartleby should have stayed out of this. Again, Mallory stands up and frustrates Raven. After the anchor is fixed, Bat and Mallory fix the hole in the Mandala ring, saving Mandala. Once more, Spider and Raven try to convince us to stop meddling. Bartleby also projects himself in, trying to ease the tension. We head to Husk, where the Chaos Heart is located, to stop Raven and Spider once and for all. Once we get there, Shadow and Light forces are battling. Raven summoned the Storm Titan to destroy the Heart. We head into the groves of the Primordial Trees, where Mallory is to conduct the Titanic Lullaby, an ancient song that calms the Storm Titan. We fight the Titan's Trident, destroying it. Again, this weakens the Titan. We head up to the Heart and find both Raven and Spider are already there. They argue, and the Storm Titan becomes the Aether Titan emboldened by the storms of Imperia. Mallory and Bat combine their forces with us, and we become the Divine Paradox. We fight the Aether Titan, beating it. We infuse the Chaos Heart with Paradox Essence, healing it and reweaving the threads which have been torn. Spider and Raven decide it is best not to destroy the Spiral, and vow to remain on Husk, protecting the Chaos Heart for the rest of time. We head victoriously back to the Arcanum, where Sybil, the knowledge tree states that us insignificant beings have nothing to fear.